Many developers cringe when they hear the words dependency injection. It's a difficult pattern and it's not meant for beginners. That's what you are made to believe. The truth is that dependency injection is a fundamental pattern that is very easy to adopt. My favorite quote about dependency injection is a quote by James Shore. It summarizes much of the confusion that surrounds dependency injection. Dependency injection is a $25 term for a 5 cent concept. When I first heard about dependency injection, I also figured it was a technique too advanced for my needs at the time. I could do without dependency injection, whatever it was. But what is dependency injection really? I later learned that, if reduced to its bare essentials, dependency injection is a simple concept. James Shore offers a succinct and straightforward definition of dependency injection. Dependency injection means giving an object its instant variables. Really, that's it. For developers new to dependency injection, it is important to learn the basics before relying on a framework or library. Start simple. Chances are that you already use dependency injection without realizing it. Dependency injection is nothing more than injecting dependencies into an object instead of tasking the object with the responsibility of creating its dependencies. Or, as James Shore puts it, you give an object its instant variables instead of creating them in the object. Let me show you what that means with an example. In this example we define a UI view controller subclass that declares a property request manager of type optional request manager. We can set the value of the request manager property one of two ways. Let's start without dependency injection. The first option is to task the view controller class with the instantiation of the request manager instance. We can make the property lazy or initialize the request manager in the view controller's initializer. That's not the point though. The point is that the view controller is in charge of creating the request manager instance. This means that the view controller class not only knows about the behavior of the request manager class, it also knows about its instantiation. That's a subtle but important detail. Let's see how this works with dependency injection. There is another option. We can inject the request manager instance into the view controller instance. Even though the end result may appear identical, it definitely isn't. By injecting the request manager, the view controller doesn't know how to instantiate the request manager. Many developers immediately discard this option because it's cumbersome and unnecessarily complex. But if you consider the benefits, dependency injection becomes much more appealing. I'd like to show you another example to emphasize the point I made earlier. Take a look at the following example. The data manager class has a property, serializer, of type optional serializer. In this example, serializer is a protocol. The data manager class is in charge of instantiating an instance of a type that conforms to the serializer protocol, the request serializer class in this example. Should the data manager class know how to instantiate an object of type serializer? Take a look at this example. It shows you the power of protocols and dependency injection. The data manager class is no longer in charge of instantiating the request serializer class. It no longer assigns a value to its serializer property. In fact, we can replace request serializer with any other type as long as it conforms to the serializer protocol. The data manager no longer knows or cares about these details. You may be wondering what you gain by using dependency injection. I hope that the examples I show you have at least captured your attention. Let me list a few additional benefits of dependency injection. By injecting the dependencies of an object, the responsibilities and requirements of a class or structure become more clear and more transparent. By injecting a request manager into a view controller, we understand that the view controller depends on the request manager and we can assume that the view controller is responsible for request managing and or handling. Unit testing is so much easier with dependency injection. I'm not kidding. 
dependency injection makes it very easy to replace an object's dependencies with mock objects, making unit tests easier to set up and isolate behavior. In this example, we define a class mock serializer. Because it conforms to the serializer protocol, we can assign it to the data manager's serializer property, and that makes testing a whole lot easier. As I mentioned and illustrated earlier, another subtle benefit of dependency injection is a stricter separation of concerns. The data manager class in the previous example isn't responsible for instantiating the request serializer instance. It doesn't need to know how to do this. Even though the data manager class is concerned with the behavior of its serializer, it isn't and shouldn't be concerned with its instantiation. What if the request manager of the first example also has a number of dependencies? Should the view control instance be aware of those dependencies too? This can become very messy very quickly. The example with the data manager class illustrated how the use of protocols and dependency injection can reduce coupling in a project. Protocols are incredibly useful and versatile in Swift. This is one scenario in which protocols really shine. Most developers consider three forms or types of dependency injection. Initializer injection, property injection and method injection. These types shouldn't be considered equal though. Let me list the pros and cons of each type. I personally prefer to pass dependencies during the initialization phase of an object because this has several key benefits. The most important benefit is that dependencies passed in during initialization can be made immutable. This is very easy to do in Swift by declaring the properties for the dependencies as constants. Take a look at this example. The only way to set the serializer property is by passing it as an argument during initialization. The init with serializer method is the designated initializer and guarantees that the data manager instance is correctly configured. Another benefit is that the serializer property cannot be mutated. Because we are required to pass the serializer as an argument during initialization, the designated initializer clearly shows what the dependencies of the data manager class are. Dependencies can also be injected by declaring an internal or public property on the class or structure that requires the dependency. This may seem convenient, but it adds a loophole. The dependency can be modified or replaced. In other words, the dependency isn't immutable. Property injection is sometimes the only option you have. If you use storyboards, for example, you cannot implement a custom initializer and use initializer injection. Property injection is then your next best option. Dependencies can also be injected whenever they are needed. This is easy to do by defining a method that accepts the dependency as a parameter. In this example, the serializer isn't a property on the data manager class. Instead, the serializer is injected as an argument of the serialize request with method. Even though the data manager class loses some control over the dependency, the serializer, this type of dependency injection introduces flexibility. Depending on the use case, we can choose what type of serializer to pass into serialize request with. It's important to emphasize that each type of dependency injection has its use cases. While initializer injection is a great option in many scenarios, that doesn't make it the best option or the preferred option. Consider the use case and then decide which type of dependency injection is the best fit. Dependency injection is a pattern that can be used to eliminate the need for singletons in a project. I'm not a fan of the singleton pattern and I avoid it whenever possible. Even though I don't consider the singleton pattern an anti-pattern, I believe they should be used very, very sparingly. The singleton pattern increases coupling, whereas dependency injection reduces coupling. Too often, developers use the singleton pattern because it's an easy solution to a often trivial problem. Dependency injection, however, adds clarity to a project. By injecting dependencies during the initialization of an object, it becomes clear what dependencies the target class or structure has, and it also reveals some of the object's responsibilities. 
Dependency injection is one of my favorite patterns because it helps me stay on top of complex projects. This pattern has so many benefits. The only drawback I can think of is the need for a few more lines of code. 